Welcome to our webinar, Ticket 8 and Beyond, Japan's Approach to African Development in an Evolving Global Environment. My name is Izumi Ono, a professor of GRIPS. On behalf of the GRIPS Development Forum, I would like to thank you all for participating in today's webinar. We, GRIPS Development Forum, are the group of researchers engaged in pragmatic and policy-oriented research in the area of inter international development, industrial development, and cooperation at the National Graduate Institute for Policy Studies based in Tokyo. As you know, the ACE Tokyo International Deve Conference for African Development, Ticket 8, will be held in Tunisia on August 27th and 28th, one and a half months ahead. This time, TGAT 8 will take place amid the complex global environment in the shadow of war in Ukraine and prolonged impact of COVID. These threats are external to Africa, but in today's connected world, it is difficult for everybody, all the country in the society, including Africa, to avoid the consequences. At the same time, this will provide a valuable opportunity to show Japan's renewed commitment to African development and think about whether and how Japan should adjust and enhance its partnership with Africa. So at this critical juncture, we consider it very important to have open discussions on the content and direction of Japan-Africa partnership from diverse angles, together with an international expert who follows closely Japanese foreign and development cooperation policy, and with Japanese experts who are deeply engaged in business and development partnership with Africa on the ground. The global landscape keeps changing, and the world faces great uncertainty and even that there are the risks of disintegration. But I hope today's webinar will serve an opportunity to go back to the basics what is important for everybody and for the world, for the each countries, and then promote positive thinking and action, taking stock of what we have done so far and how we can do more, and what kind of partnership Japan and Africa would like to foster in the future continuously. So let me explain today's program and speakers. The two parts. The first part of the program is a kickoff presentation by three experts. This will be followed by second part discussion and Q&A. So let me introduce three speakers. First, Ms. Therine Pajon. She is the head of Japan Research, the Center of Asian Study at the French Institute for International Relations, IFRI, very well-known think tank in France. Pajon san studies Japan's strategic role in Asia, Pacific, and Africa with attention to the evolving international relations and geostrategic setting of the Indo-Pacific region. And also last year, April, she kindly attended our also webinar in Africa-Japan partnership. Second speaker is Mr. Ryuichi Kato. He's a vice president of Japan International Cooperation Agency, JICA. Previously, he served as a managing director of the African Development Department of uh, JICA and made a, con a tremendous contribution on the past TICAT conferences, which deserved great attention. Third speaker is Mr. Yusuke Takahashi. He is a country director of Coco Plus Foundation and representative in Ghana of Ajinomoto Foundation. Takahashi-san has been engaged in the Ghana Nutrition Improvement Project for many years with great passion in collaboration with the Ghana Health Service, building on Ajinomoto's long-standing business experience in West Africa. So he is joining from Accra today. The panel discussion will be moderated by our colleague, uh, Ms. Sayoko Uesu. She's a research associate of GRIPS Development Forum. Uh, Sayoko is the expert of uh, African development, particularly with deep knowledge of Western African countries in politics and economies. Let me move to the main session. So I would like to ask Sayoko 
with them uh, to uh, to moderate that, that main program. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Ismi Ono, for your kind intro introduction. Now, uh, I'm, I would like to invite uh, Mrs. Celine Pajon of IFRI to start your uh, um, to, to, to start your remark. Thank you. Sure. Thank Hello, uh, hello everyone. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to, to be with uh, you today. I would like first to, to thank uh, Professor Ono and Ue Susan for their invitation and for their continuous uh, support. Um, they are a very uh, good uh, friend of mine and uh, again, very happy to be, to be here to, um, to share my, my, my thought. Uh, about how um, the COVID-19 pandemics and the, the war in Ukraine uh, are likely to impact Japan's uh, policy uh, in Africa. Uh, actually, I wrote um, a short piece that was published on the East Asia Forum uh, website some time ago. Uh, so it's, it's only very short piece. Uh, it's an op-ed. Um, it's uh, my very personal thought about um, the likely impact. So um, I would be very happy to get any feedback from my uh, Japanese friends about uh, my hypothesis and uh, see if, uh, if wh what I got right and what I got wrong. Um, and um, to, to quickly, quickly uh, set up the, the, the context uh, before uh, the pandemics, uh, well, just um, even before the last uh, TCAD back in 2019, um, there was the, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the we, we, we saw that actually um, the, the very uh, kind of ambitious uh, promise of funding that uh, Japan did to uh, Africa during the, the latest uh, TICAD or to, to, to 2013 and, and 15 were not uh, met. So, um, so last TICAD, um, there, there was only uh, um, uh, part of the promised uh, uh, contribution, financial support from Japan that have been uh, met. Um, and this is uh, because uh, the Japanese companies are, are still uh, quite uh, reluctant to, uh, to invest uh, in, in Africa because the continent is perceived as quite um, distant and um, sometimes a bit, uh, a bit uh, risky too. Um, and um, in my view, this uh, failure to, to fulfill the, the funding promise um, reflected the gap at some point, um, a gap between the political willingness of the government to be more present in Africa, uh, maybe also to, to provide an alternative to, to China, to, to what China is doing on the continent. So a gap between the political willingness of the government and uh, the economic interest uh, of uh, the Japanese investors because more and more Japan is trying to, to, to shift from a, a model uh, based on the ODA uh, to a model based on the, on the private investment. But here we can see a kind of, of gap. So our, as a result, the last uh, ticket, the ticket, ticket seven was less politically focused and uh, it put a lot of emphasis on, on the business. It was largely um, business led at that time and, um, and really uh, put a lot of, of, of emphasis on the promotion of, on uh, private investment. But uh, this time I, I argue that the Japan's engagement with uh, Africa uh, is likely to be strengthened in a more um, maybe political or, or strategic way again. Uh, and so I will explain this. Uh, I found uh, five uh, reasons um, to, for, for Japan to do so. Uh, so the first reason um, is because I think uh, Japan is uh, really concerned about the, the, the pandemics uh, of COVID-19 and how the pandemics could weaken uh, the African economies and worsen the, their dependence vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Chinese aid and investment. Uh, of course, with associated risk regarding their sovereignty. Uh, we all know the, the Sri Lankan case 
that is uh, illustrating that. So uh, I believe that Tokyo's plan to help African post-COVID recovery aims at preventing their debt uh, default and also uh, building up their autonomy and resilience. Resilience uh, is very uh, important concept right now. Um, so this policy, as you know, it's promoting international norms of transparency uh, and sustainability in infrastructures um, that uh, Tokyo uh, promoted in multilateral setting uh, through uh, G20 and OECD and, and other settings. Um, so it is also in the interest of, of Japan uh, to, um, to prevent the de default because uh, the government as a policy is refraining from lending money to heavily indebted countries. So uh, there are several kinds of, of interest at play here. So this was the, the first reason. The second reason, uh, I believe that uh, the war in Ukraine uh, also provides uh, incentive to Tokyo to step up its cooperation. Um, uh, the Japan noticed that the African countries were actually divided uh, in the UN when it uh, came to, to suddenly uh, condemn the Russian invasions. Um, only 28 African countries out of the, of the 54 voted in favor of the UN resolution um, in March to uh, demand uh, Moscow to, to immediately end um, the illegal use of force uh, and the invasion of, of Ukraine. And I think for Tokyo, it's very important um, that African countries that have um, holding a lot of uh, seats in the UN um, actually stands uh, firmly uh, in support of a rules-based order and condemn clearly the threat or use of force. Um, of course, behind that, um, there is Tokyo's concern that uh, this uh, kind of, of vote might indicate a possible support from African countries to China um, in case uh, Beijing wants to, um, to, uh, to attack or invade uh, Taiwan or even the, the, the Senkaku Islands. So um, I think Japan's, it's very important for Japan to step up its um, its uh, commitment, its diplomatic effort to try to influence uh, in, at some point its African partner position on, on this. Uh, a third reason now is uh, that um, reinforcing ties with uh, Africa in the current international context also allows Japan to advance its soft power on the international scene. Uh, first, the pandemics highlighted the concept of uh, human security. Uh, that is really at the core of you know, Japan's um, development uh, policy for a long time. Uh, so it provides an opportunity for Japan to communicate about, about this and also communicate about its um, also long time commitment to health governance, uh, especially again infectious and, and other diseases. And of course, Japan is a good, strong contributor to the COVAX uh, system to provide vaccine to, uh, to countries around the world and um, including in, in Africa. Um, and also uh, addressing food uh, insecurity uh, following the war in Ukraine uh, also uh, allows uh, Japan to uh, communicate and publicize um, again its long uh, term commitment to uh, support uh, the rice development uh, in sub-Saharan Africa. So its contribution to try to reduce uh, Africans' dependence and to, to strengthen the African um, food uh, security at some point. Of course, uh, more importantly, uh, acti actively engaging with uh, African country also aims for Japan to gain their, their support for uh, Japan's long time uh, proposal to reform the UN Security uh, Council and to become um, at some point a permanent member. Uh, because in the context of the war in Ukraine, we've seen that the UN Security Council has not been able to, to prevent or uh, to, to sanction very, um, very strongly uh, Russia. Um, well, the, the Japanese plan to reform uh, this uh, uh, organization has been um, revived. And so we've seen uh, more, more discussion on this. 
Um, my fourth point, I hope I'm not too, uh, too long, I will be quick. Uh, my fourth point, uh, it's a very pragmatic reason, it's because um, I think that in the context of war uh, in Ukraine, there is a necessity for Japan to try to diversify uh, its suppliers of energy and, and mineral resources. Um, Tokyo announced that the oil import from Russia uh, will um, uh, will be ended, will be suspended, and uh, it's, maybe it's going to be more and more difficult to continue to um, to deal with uh, with Russia regarding the gas, also development in Sakhalin too, and uh, the import of the gas. So um, Japan has to look for uh, other um, other partners. So Middle East countries are identified as good alternative for oil supplies. And um, Japanese companies also plan to turn all the uh, LNG tankers into floating offshore um, LNG uh, production base uh, in order to cut cost. And um, maybe their this floating production site could be uh, built off uh, the coast of Africa, maybe near uh, Mozambique, uh, which is a key country for Japan's investment uh, in uh, LNG uh, supply uh, and infrastructure. And finally, my, my last point, the, the fifth, uh, fifth reason, um, I think that um, the reinforcing activities in Africa uh, right now uh, will also provide uh, Japan with opportunity to expand its uh, partnership uh, with key partners such as uh, India, uh, Turkey, but also uh, European partners, the EU um, and France. But we, we can talk about that um, later on during the, the, the Q&A. So for all those reasons, I think it's likely to, we are likely to see Japan stepping up its commitment in Africa, um, most likely in tandem with partner. And at the same time, the context uh, will likely be even more challenging for uh, Japanese investors. So we might see again uh, this uh, tension um, uh, continuing. Well, thank you very much for your patience. Okay, thank you very much, Celine, for sharing your concise but very sharp observations. Now um, I'm going to ask. Mr. Kato, Mr. Yuichi Kato, Vice President of JICA, uh, to start uh, your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Could you see my slide? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ono, for your kind introduction. Uh, good afternoon, with San. Good morning, Kajon San and Takahashi San. Today, I have chosen a bit provocative title, um, but I like to explain what Japan should be doing now as a trusted and chosen partner with Africa, and how JICA should act in this very complex context in the face of TICAT 8. The world confronts multiple uh, crises, including those brought about by the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the war in Ukraine and climate change. COVID-19 has already damaged African economies, 40 million people into extreme poverty due to limited resources for financial assistance to households and farms. Health system vulnerability has led to low vaccination rates that hinder growth recovery. Frequent droughts and uh, locust plague damage agriculture production depending on rain water. In addition to these crises, Africa is now facing food and energy supply crisis, followed up from Ukraine crisis. The international community must support and work together with Africa, African partners, so that the continent can build back better. Although there have been past commitments of support from partner countries as shown in this table, COVID-19 and the Ukraine crisis risk growing attention and international cooperation toward Africa. At the time when Africa needs it the most, TICAT 8 can play a role to refocus attention on Africa and enable African-led solutions to Africa's challenges in a way that enhances human security. 
why Africa matters to the world. Africa's stability is critical for global prosperity. Without social and economic stability, Africa's potential in terms of resources, population, and use cannot be developed, leading to violent extremism and other forms of violence. Africa has over one quarter of the seats in the UN and is a vital actor for, for, to foster international solidarity to respect peace, liberty, de democracy, and human rights. In addition, Africa is largely lacking behind in achieving SDGs. Let's look at the current status of Japanese development cooperation for Africa. Although not mentioned in this table, I, I forgot to admit it. Japan is the fifth largest provider of ODA to Africa after the United States, Germany, and the UK and the France. On the other hand, if we look at the trade and investment, we see that they are very small compared to the size of the world's third largest GDP. In terms of trade, it accounts for less than 1% of Japanese trade, Japan's trade, and in terms of investment, Japan is not in the top 10 countries, despite being the world's largest investor. On the contrary, I think there me this means that there is still great potential. You all know that in diplomacy, we are seeing a dynamic turn within the larger framework of the uh, free and open Indo-Pacific, which, uh, which was first announced at the TICAT 6 in Kenya by former Prime Minister Abe, unfortunately, who was struck down by Barak last year, uh, last week. I would like to take this opportunity to express my sincere condolence. TICAT, as you may know, Summit Level International Conference on Africa's Development, initiated by Japan in 1993, occurs every three years, alternately in Japan and in Africa. TICAT 8, to be hosted by Tunisia, August 27, 28. TICAT is unique among other fora in that it is a, it is a much stakeholder meeting organized by the government of Japan, United Nations, UNDP, World Bank, and the AUC. TICAT has two fac uh, facets. One is to promote bilateral relations between Japan and each African country. The other is for the Japanese government, together with the organizers, to provide an open, inclusive, and multi-stakeholder platform for African development. The latter is very an important aspect of Japan's role as a global facilitator in the international community. The ministerial meeting, level meeting was held in March in preparation for TICAT 8, and the message was uh, TICAT should, uh, should set out the pathway for Africa development overcoming COVID-19 challenges and promote the growth of the world with private sector businesses as a driving force for a Brazilian economy. Uh, let's uh, look at a little bit uh, JICA. JICA will work on human security and uh, quality growth. We, uh, with its partners, will take the lead in forging bonds of trust across the world, aspiring for a free, peaceful, and prosperous world where people can hope for a better future and explore their diverse potentials in the sustainable planet. Our three principles of cooperation in Africa are one, for, uh, first, people focused on human security. Second, respect Africa's ownership and co-creation with Africa. Third, long-term commitment and quality growth. Here is an uh, overview of JICA's approach towards TICAT 8, towards a resilient, inclusive, and prosperous Africa as a slogan. We push forward for protecting life and livelihood, strengthening African economy, and uh, realizing peace and security with cross cutting focus on digital transformation, gender equality, and so forth. Let's look at some examples of uh, projects. First, the um, fighting COVID-19. Jake has launched the Initiative for Global Health and Medicine in 2020, soon after the outbreak of pandemic, composed of three pillars, prevention, precaution, and treatment. 
Last one mile support for vaccination. One of the reasons for the lack of vaccination progress in Africa is the insufficient cold chain infrastructure. Providing cold chain and medical equipment to establish an effective and safe vaccination system and to contain further spread of COVID-19. Support for advanced research and education in public sector, uh, public health uh, emergencies. As you see in this slide, we JICA together with Japanese institutions have been supporting these regional research institutions over the years by strengthening human, human and institutional capacity and networking these institutions under the Africa led disease control initiatives such as Africa CDC. One of the longest established institutions is the Noguchi Memorial Institute for Medical Research in Ghana. Established in honor of Dr. Noguchi, a Japanese medical researcher who passed away in Ghana in 1928 during his bacteriological research for yellow fever. Partnering with JICA for over 40 years since its inception in 1970. Uh, 79. Serves as the most important national and regional laboratory for COVID-19 PCR tests in Ghana and Western Africa. Another example is from treatment pillar is Cairo University Pediatric Hospital in Egypt, supporting the construction of this hospital and its continuous capacity building since 1979, known as the Japanese Hospital by Cairo locals. Recently, JICA has signed a long agreement of up to 200 million dollar with the African Exim Bank to support COVID-19 responses through private sector investment finance, co-financed with Japanese mega banks. This loan will be used to manufacture medical and pharmaceutical products, including vaccine manufacturing. This homegrown solution accelerator program is initiated by Union African Union, uh, African Union, AUDA NEPAT, development arm of African Union in 2020 at the onset of the pandemic. We supported selected companies from the East African community as a pilot last year and expanding to the continental level this second year. Revital, a Kenyan manufacturer of recent essential medical su supplies and consumables, succeeded in receiving 7 million US dollar in investment from a venture capital fund and a philanthropic organization. Next, food security and nutrition. If an initiative for food and nutrition security in Africa, a framework for collaboration to accelerate the implementation of food and nutrition security policies in all African countries. Card food uh, production, uh, rice production, coalition for Africa's rice development. Launched at TICAT 4 2008, succeeded in doubling rice production in Sub-Saharan Africa over 10 years. Updated at TICAT 7, uh, new target was set, doubling again rice production in Sub-Saharan Africa over 2019 to uh, 2030, up to uh, 56 million tons by introducing rice approach, resilience, industrialization, competitiveness, empowerment. 32 card member countries could potentially be self-sufficient rice producers. Next, climate change. Africa's vulnerability climate change stand out in comparison with other to other regions. On the other hand, it counts for only 4% of global green gas emission. Declines in agricultural productivity due to climate change and increase in malnutrition due to frequent droughts are predicted and occurring. Cross-sectoral adap adaptation efforts are needed, including agriculture, infrastructure, water resources, ecosystems, and disaster prevention. JICA's activities will be conducted with an awareness of transition to a decarbonized society and building a climate resilient society with the implementation of the Paris Declaration in mind. JICA is promoting renewable energy projects such as geothermal and wind power plants. In addition, 
project is promoting off-grid electrification projects in rural areas, building long-term resilience and stability. African Business Education Initiative for Youth. This program, which began in 2014, is a partnership with over 400 Japanese companies and students participating in the program have internships at, uh, at these companies. After returning to their home countries, the students are expected to become bridges between Japan and Africa. In fact, after returning to their home countries, the students have started working for Japanese companies, becoming partners of Japanese, Japanese or starting their own businesses. Uh, Corridor Development Initiative aims for regional integration through combination of infrastructure development and industrial development, and for enhancing connectivity between coastal and landlocked countries. Three uh, priority corridors were identified at TICAT 5. The concept of integrated corridor approach was adopted in PIDA, uh, PAP2, African Union's uh, Continental Infrastructure uh, Program. Uh, the Ninja Project Ninja is the, uh, the, the name of this project represents the central idea of Japanese support for Africa, next innovation with Japan. Tech has been working to build an ecosystem to promote business innovation originating from Africa. As one of its efforts, Tech held a business competition last year to support startups that create inno innovative business models and technologies in the past COVID-19. Era. Around 3,000 business plans were submitted, and we provide accelerator programs to about 60 finalists, as well as matching them with Japanese companies. Africa's internet economy is growing rapidly, and digitalization is further accelerating in the COVID-19 pandemic. For example, in Rwanda, a fab lab for young entrepreneurs has been established to create an ecosystem to solve social issues using ICT, along with policy support. Let's wrap up my uh, presentation. Africa has been severely affected by the crisis of the COVID-19 and pandemic and the Ukraine uh, war. It is time to reinforce the support to protect African people, people's life, freedom and dignity and support them uh, recover, uh, recover from the crisis. TICAT 8 will be an important occasion to highlight the concept of human security and quality growth, as well as foster international solidarity towards global peace. JICA, one of the world's largest bilateral development institutions, has been working with Africa, African people, for more than 60 years and will accelerate cooperation to support Africa, build it forward better towards a resilient, inclusive and prosperous continent in collaboration with trusted, par trusted partners, especially with Japanese private sectors. Thank you very much for your attention. I think that uh, I will invite uh, feedbacks from, from the audience. Thank you very much. Mr. Kato, thank you very much for sharing a comprehensive view of JCAS activities. Uh, we are also interested by your provocative title, um, how can Japan become a chosen partner? Uh, I hope we will come back later to discuss on this matter, this, this very important matter. Thank you very much. And then I'm going to ask Mr. Takahashi, uh, country director of Coco Plus Foundation in Ghana, to present. Uh, to present. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, it's uh, okay. here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So for giving the opportunity and uh, Selin's Pejan san and uh, uh, <coughs> Kato san to have a nice presentation. So I, I would like to <coughs> explain about the Ghana Nutrition Improvement Project as a whole. Uh, one of the cases for pa pa partnerships. So uh, we will say GNIP. So, so establishing sustainable nutrition intervention or market-based approach with social behavior change communication, SBCC, through genuinely synergetic PPP. Thank you. I'm Yusuke Takahashi. Yes, 
uh, from uh, the country director of Coco Plus Foundation. So, oh, Kato san and Pajun、uh, <coughs> san explained the、uh, so、holistic view, but I'm, I'm、uh, focusing on nutrition part and nutrition improvement part. So, this is my summary of the, today's presentation. So, So, about the, such、uh, nutrition intervention part and、uh, in urban p a y a r areas with compa comparably adequate purchasing power in low middle income countries like Ghana. So, market based approach with SBCC is the best, one of the best scenario and for sustainable and cost effective nutrition improvement. So, SBCC is、uh, social behavior change demand create and market based approach is distribute、uh, nutritious powder. And finally, so they Uh, select the nutritious food,、uh, so it's not private, provided for free. So, this is a, a high social return investment. And this can be achieved through truly synergistic public private partnerships in local, is a from bottom up approach. But furthermore, the Japanese government top down initiative through TICAT、uh, has accelerated this bottom up approach, such as our project, and led to high quality co creation involving many different industries. I would like to、uh, in, introduce uh, uh, from my, our cases. So, our principle is beneficiary first and mutually respectful and transparent to partners and durable concept with joy. So, our expansion model is born small, grow big, and self sustain. This is、uh, from 2009 to now, so almost 13 years. So, first concept creation as a startup and evidence is outcome creation by getting evidence and trust creation three,、uh, for getting public endorsement. And、uh, Consortium creation, so cross sectoral and multi sectoral partnerships. This is a、uh, startup, probably PPP. And now、uh, the social impact creation part,、uh, stage scale up to nationwide in Ghana and、uh, in, in future scale out to another neighboring countries for、uh, this community creation. Community means、uh, team、uh, behavior change,、uh, we, we are calling it, so such same part. So, the Ajinomoto Foundation is founded in 2017, public interest foundation. So,、uh, and the whole business、uh, related to food and nutrition to contribute to solve the social issues. So, uh, disaster uh, uh, reconstruction support project in、uh, Fukushima and Tohoku,、uh, more than 4,000 times,、uh, we are doing like a、uh, uh, kitchen, uh, uh, food, food,、uh, kitchen, kitchen, uh, Gathering, gathering for、uh, kitchen school,、uh, food school, cooking school, and the grant AI project. And BNEP is、uh, creating the nutritionist in, in Vietnam. Vietnam has not, doesn't have the、uh, nutritionist. So we made the university,、uh, the, the, the department of university and job code, and make, now creating the job. In, for example, in hospital. Now, is Coco Plus is Ghana Nutrition Improvement Project. All parties, public private partnerships, but I'm focusing on this Ghana's case. So, the background is mal,、uh, our stunting part,、uh, issue. So, malnutrition, of course,、uh, everyone knows the cause of unhealthy growth of body and brain. Please look at this、uh, the height and brain development. So,、uh, this is irreversible, not reversible. So, so such uh, uh, CPU,、uh, we have to,、uh, that is never, never、uh, reversible means. So we have to, it、uh, affects the human capital development. But the number of malnourished children under five years is only sub Sahara is increasing. So this is the issue. So、uh, in Ghana, the stunting issue in Ghana is、uh, stunting, sub 30% of two years infants are stunted after six months. The green is a stunting. So, Rapid increase after six months of birth、uh, starting weaning period. That's why I saw a、uh, uh, hypothesis the complementary food is starting from six months. That's why this is the cause of、uh, root cause. So,、uh, this one of the reasons the Coco Sakura is uh, uh, maize, maize, the porridge based on maize. So, this is not uh, uh, out the protein and micronutrients. So,、uh, so, respecting Ghanaian traditional local food culture, so、uh, we made a supplement for cocoa. As, and the Ghana Nutrition Improvement Project was started with the University of Ghana in 2009. So,、uh, 
so this is a, a overall for 10 years. So product was made and Coco Plus is a traditional complementary food to avoid stunting and anemia and developed with university academia and also uh, NGO in uh, U US and the local company and the and local ingredients and uh, distributing in local. So distribution is local sales marketing organization. So we are co developed uh, we are uh, working together in ESM and uh, this is affordable price with uh, only 10 cent per sachet is uh, affordable for uh, they can buy uh, uh, the beneficiaries can buy one sachet one day for one children. So the price was set. And for uh, penetration, so collaborate with Ghanaian government. So community health workers of Ghanaian health service conduct nutrition education to mothers and introduce COCOPLUS as a practical way to improve their balanced complementary feeding to infants. So government nurses uh, recommend to purchase COCOPLUS. To four benef beneficiaries. And the now scale, scale up phase is collaboration with Ghana Health Service by nutrition education. So, uh, 99 districts and 9,000 government nurses, almost 30% and nationwide, distributing in over 10,000 retailers. So, we are doing uh, all things and uh, getting evidence like the, uh, this is one of the uh, right top is. Uh, uh, Anemia is Coco Plus is improves the anemia, uh, and hemoglobin level that means so reduce, reducing the anemia level. Yes. So, how to start? Why do we need the collaboration with, pub, with public? Is this reason? So, uh, for creating beneficiaries' behavior changes through nurses' daily nutrition education. So this is build up a model uh, that this is very important. So uh, we are making such model now uh, for it takes 10 years, but uh, firstly, understand the health check, health uh, through the uh, maternal child health care recording books, thanks to JICA. And uh, after that understanding, so nurses uh, uh, educate and in the nutrition, doing nutrition counseling to mothers based on the uh, uh, results of in infants based on MCHR decoding book and, and introduce Coco Plus. And uh, we uh, deliver around the, uh, just one mile to the mothers and utilize Coco Plus and feed the babies. This uh, cycle is uh, every month because of because the mothers come to uh, health centers of, by utilizing um, MSGHR recording book. So uh, we, we created this model, so finally, and we, it works well. So uh, we, this was only one, one district, but we started the uh, uh, whole place. Uh, we would like to scale up. So, so we officialize a public-private partnership, especially with Ghana Health Service. So we'll start, we started the collaboration in the 2018 with Ghana Health Service. So we made the MOU and uh, make the uh, poster or nutrition education tools. And we, uh, we uh, gather the nurses and do the uh, orientation to, uh, to education to nurses, how to introduce Plus and also how often, how to feed other, other complementary feed, the, the local, to utilize local available uh, food. So this was officially we started. And uh, it works well. And we also evaluated the public private, this public private partnership in by third party, uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the D Lab leads the dialogue and through the several workshops by each firm with Gun Health Service and Ajinomoto Foundation. And finally, so uh, we understood, uh, the evaluated that uh, this PPP is working is work, working very well. So for example, uh, this is the driver's pyramid individual partners goals. So in each layers, so uh, the, the purple star means the most important part for, together. So uh, this is uh, overlapped, means it work well. So uh, you can find the uh, uh, 
MIT D Labs website. So please refer this for evaluation of PPP in Ghana. So uh, as such, uh, 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 activity was approved in also Japanese government. So we started a collaboration with World Food Program and Japanese government. So uh, from 2019, so uh, new new partner come <laughs> that that WFP entered to our pro team. So uh, based on based on this, we made the uh, uh, evidence and offered the WFP uh, as a food basket. So WFP officially uh, register our product. That's why so we could start uh, the collaboration with the United Nations. So, uh, but so uh, this is bottom up approach for public private partnerships, but it takes almost nine years from start. So PPP based on bottom up approach needs a lot of efforts and time and resources. So this would be entry barrier for other private sectors. So uh, this is one issue. So, uh, 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 but on the other hand, so I, I would like to uh, uh, connect to the TICAT and uh, so collaboration approach by top-down initiative. So African Health and Wellbeing Initiative, AFWIN, was uh, established by TICAD 7. This is uh, uh, signed in TICAD 7 Yokohama 2019 with uh, Ghana government and Japanese government. So other, other five countries also uh, concluded this MOU. This means so, uh, ABC means human resources and product services and foundation part. So each layers, in each layer, so Japanese private sector involved in, in the African countries and they work together and create uh, the universal health coverage. So this is business oriented uh, <coughs> initiative, but the Japanese government support top in top-down approach. This is a new uh, initiative. So oh, th this was established. That's why. So I thought this very nice idea. But so oh, on the other hand, so everyone is a little hesitated. That's why. So oh, oh, I started to uh, make the new uh, the project. So we. Uh, Thanks to Sysmex and uh, the number one company of the hematology uh, area and hemocrit area. And also uh, uh, NEC is a, a fam of, of course popular uh, ICT company uh, could join uh, to this uh, based on from this uh, initiative. So this is African Health and Affin project toward TICAD 8. Now we started. So based on this top-down initiative, so uh, each uh, uh, part, uh, we collaborate together. So Sysmex and NEC, and of course, uh, JICA's MCHRB project, uh, and also our product, Coplas and WFP. So we create a new project, uh, thanks to the Japanese government, uh, PPP type grant in government of Japan. So. Uh, this name is the project for universal nutrition and health coverage through sustainable system with business oriented system for nutrition improvement. So, so I, I uh, summarize uh, of new project uh, only uh, one part about uh, regarding with uh, uh no, uh, affin part is uh, I'd like to explain. So, uh, of course, so the, the first is so, uh, social behavior communication is ori oriented by nurses, but the uh, NHS ICT device uh, support this uh, uh, to uh, nurses. So every all nurses become the Florence Nightingale. And uh, of course, the, based on the collaboration with Achromot Foundation, Coco Plus Foundation, and Gun Health Service, SBCC and Coco Plus orientation is done. And uh, collaborating with MCHRB uh, book, so <coughs> the mother and the children are supported based on the education and introducing the Coco Plus and, and for preventing mal malnutrition. So, Coco Plus is provided and recommended by nurses. 
And also, if some nurse, mothers and children is not, not so feeling well or uh, severe anemia, so they are referred based on the ICT tablet and referred to the hospitals. And uh, the Sysmex device can easy to monitor only one minute. And also, this device can uh, detect anemia, uh, not only anemia, but also malaria, malaria in one minute. So very high uh, sensitivity. So uh, normally severe anemia people become uh, very uh, severe malaria if they are uh, infected. So uh, this is uh, avoided. So by circuit create, creating in other other company other fields uh, relating to uh, health, uh, but we can we can create the synergy and contribute to the universal nutrition and health coverage. So uh, further development has started. So not only WFP project, the UNDP project uh, was started. So uh, digital solution for health, nutrition, and medical services and the Africa Health and Wellbeing Initiative has started. This is a uh, uh, little uh, upstream to gathering the, based on the ICT device, so gathering such uh, information and utilize for policy making. And also scale up. Our project is only pilot, but expanding this uh, uh, project to uh, uh, to other uh, places and also uh, expand not only uh, mothers and the children but also all uh, the normal uh, the father or normal people who are uh, checking uh, NCDs uh, for diabetes as well. So uh, such, such PPP has now started horizontally and comprehensive and sustainable approach to maternal child health care and nutrition improvement will be possible. And also this is uh, connected with new DX technology. The left side is individual part is not uh, created, but by ICT and DX can connect whole technologies. So, uh, so new technology and the new PPP can uh, ex uh, contribute for a comprehensive uh, PIP approach. So now, so uh, in future, collaboration in future for me, so uh, I want to contribute to improve nutrition beyond, we, on, on not only winning children. So uh, the distribution network uh, is very a uh, bottleneck for in, in the developing countries. That's why, so uh, I would like to distribute other nutritional products and also social business. So uh, we will change social business model from on, not only, uh, only providing cookbooks, but also, and and change to healthy food platform. So uh, in detail, so fortified foods for adolescent women and mothers are made by uh, German, uh, Germanese fund and also DSN. So uh, by uh, co-distributing, uh, the bottleneck was uh, become uh, reduced and also not only Japan, all stakeholders uh, gather for same objectives. So, so I conclude the through TCAT, we will complete quality and sustainable oriented cooperation in Africa through genuine synergistic public private partnership, both bottom up and top down, uh, and actually universal nutrition uh, and health coverage in Africa. So, uh, TCAT uh, five, uh, the Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said that UHC as Japan brand by with Coco Plus in opening speech. And if not, it's genuinely synergetic multi sector partnership as in declarations. And AFWIN and TICAT 7 business oriented UHC and top down approach. So, thanks to this, so uh, I'm realizing if not, and AFWIN and UNHC as Japan brand in TICAT 9 and locally. And finally, so I want to locally let UHC encouraged by Japan means new AFWIN. So, or in Ghana, become the uh, gateway of uh, such uh, pilot test and uh, expanding the uh, remaining Africa uh, by new innovative PPP approach. So through Japanese contribution, that's why so I would like to uh, contribute this part and also uh, Japan has the power to do this. Yes, uh, so uh, it was sorry for Prime Minister. I made the new <laughs> plan, so Afin from TICAT. So, so I want to make the right sign change so, or uh, new Afin from TICAT, sorry, so in Japanese, but uh, I, I, I dare uh, uh, show you uh, because uh, Prime Minister Abe has, uh, has a uh, tragedy. So so this is the final. So uh, I said the just bottom side, so 
bottom-up approach of PPP and the uh, top-down initiative through TCAT has accelerated our project and led to high-quality co-creation improving many different industries. This is, uh, I think, that uh, high-quality co-creation and the top-down is a very effective way uh, through TCAT because bottom-up needs time. So oh, by, by both bottom-up and top-down uh, approach and co-creating together, so uh, I think we can uh, contribute the uh, universal health coverage uh, as Japan, Japan brand. Thank you so much. Sorry for being long. Um, Mr. Takahashi, thank you very much for your uh, very rich and detailed presentation. Uh, this project is one of the prominent success cases of PPP in Africa, and we are so uh, impressed by your uh, experience. Uh, now we will move to the Q&A session. Um, we have um, 25 minutes, and we expect to have three, uh, two or three rounds of Q&A with three panelists. Um, for the first round, I will ask now one question to each panelist related to their presentation. So the, my first question goes to Celine. Um, you raise a couple of important uh, questions and the challenge that Japan and African countries are facing. So um, to tackle this, we need to further collaborate with partners and donors. In this regard, how can the EU and Japan strengthen their cooperation in Africa? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sayoko, for, uh, for your question. And uh, thank you for my, uh, my co-panelists co for their uh, very comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, I've learned a lot uh, from them. Um, yeah, regarding the, the cooperation with the EU, I think um, there are a lot of, of very good uh, development recently uh, because we've seen that in, in last March uh, there have been a EU uh, Africa uh, kind of summit um, when uh, the EU renewed its uh, engagement to, uh, to step up uh, the cooperation on the African continent. So I think this is... Um, a positive development. Um, also, there is the, the initiative, the Global Gateways uh, initiative that has been uh, adopted uh, also with uh, uh, quite an important package of, of, of money in order to, to fund the development and uh, inf infrastructure and uh, including in, in Africa. And I believe this is a very um, important convergence with what uh, Japan wants to do also uh, in Africa. And especially investing in infrastructure is not uh, so easy because it uh, requires to, to uh, sometimes to, to get, uh, to get uh, any uh, economic um, benefit from it. So you need to, to have uh, good subventions and you need to also to partners with uh, with all other um, uh, countries who knows uh, the, the the place and uh, who can uh, who can help complement what 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 you want to do. So I think in this um, this perspective, the it's a it it, it provides a good opportunity for 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 the EU and and Japan to to work together, um, especially uh, so because there is actually a partnership. Uh, between the EU and Japan regarding sustainable connectivity and quality infrastructure. It, that was uh, signed um, in September 2019. Uh, so far, it seems that it's still um, complicated, actually, actually uh, quite challenging to, to identify some, some good project because, of course, working together, even if we share interest, uh, it's not always uh, easy. Uh, you have to uh, to be able to coordinate uh, between the agencies uh, to, to to work uh, on the ground together. So even if you you will you you are with uh, like-minded countries uh, and you share a lot, uh, it's still very uh, very challenging. So I think that um, that's something uh, on which uh, both uh, both uh, the EU, both France, and, and, and Japan should should work 
on to try to, to facilitate and to, to smoothen the, the international um, cooperation. Um, what we've seen also in recent years is uh, initiative to uh, gather uh, the business and the business sector. So uh, we've seen several um, meetings uh, where uh, the Europeans and the Japanese companies could meet up and could discuss uh, about uh, the best way to, to move ahead uh, because sometimes um, even also uh, if there is some, some uh, willingness to cooperate, we are also um, sometimes in competition. Uh, because uh, we have we are sometimes the same uh, kind of uh, inco economic interest or, or expertise. So it's not uh, always uh, easy also to, to set up a partnership at the business level. But certainly we can find uh, convergence and synergies. But in order to do that, uh, of course, we need to, to really work on the networking uh, aspect, I believe, uh, between, uh, between the business uh, sectors of, of all the countries. So this kind of initiative, I think are, are very important uh, to try to set up a kind of um, solid uh, grounding uh, to really feed the, the cooperation. Uh, so we will see uh, there are a few steps uh, that have been um, taken so far. Uh, so I hope it can uh, it can uh, lead into a more um, concrete and uh, ambition ambitious uh, announcement uh, regarding uh, the EU and, and Japan cooperation in uh, in Africa. Okay, thank you very much, Celine, for your for your. Uh, uh, reply. And then uh, I pick up two questions, uh, one for Mr. Kato and one for Mr. Takahashi. Um, for Mr. Kato, we learned from your presentation that JICA has been uh, successfully managing to diversify their tools during this difficult time. Um, do you think that Ticket 8, the upcoming Ticket 8, will launch a new momentum for Japan in Africa. And what does JICA can expect uh, from this event? So, um, and my question, and another question for Mr. Takahashi uh, for Ajinomoto Corporation. Uh, you should have faced a lot of challenges in, first, uh, in fostering the partnership with African partners. Uh, would you please uh, share with us uh, uh, your experience uh, in such um, and how do you overcome the difficulty in fostering such partnership? Thank you very much. So, Mr. Kato, uh, could you please uh, respond to my uh, to our question? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sam, uh, for your question. Um, then, ticket eight, uh, because the uh, this is the uh, first ticket after new or the uh, during the pandemic we want to use ticket eight as an opportunity to reinforce strengthen our partnership with african countries to better overcome the social and economic difficulties and build long-term resilient societies by that we mean the societies that can withstand external shocks without collapse whether from issues like um, climate change or uh, crisis originating outside the continent. With African uh, facing post ticket 19 economic recovery, climate change and food, in food insecurity caused by the Ukraine crisis. The massive levels of assistance being delivered to Ukraine and its neighboring countries are necessary. But as we support Ukraine, let us forget about, let us not forget about Africa. Mm -hmm. I would like to uh, emphasize that now is the time that we as an international community must come together to support Africa and build back better from COVID-19 and the Ukraine crisis if we are meet to sustainable development goals. In addition, 
it would be our hope that the people of Africa consider the value of Japanese cooperation and deep mutual trust. In the post COVID-19 era, there will necessarily be, necessarily be uh, some adjustments. I believe that JICA's unchanging principle of human security and uh, quality growth based on the democratic values is more important than ever for Africa. JICA adds further value to its approach by utilizing uh, DX and innovation, especially through strong private sector partnerships to meet the needs of emerging challenges. JICA 8 is an excellent opportunity for JICA to share and discuss both traditional and the new values with our African partners to deepen our relationship in the new era. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Kato. And Mr. Takahashi, are you ready for uh, uh, your answer? Yes, thank you. So, thank you. The challenge is take uh, for us is so, uh, oh, as as I said, so from start the project, uh, from since two thousand nine, it takes time to start the pub partner, uh, the public start public private partnership officially. So uh, we have to getting evidence and endorsement. Uh, it's a uh, very mm, it's taking time. And second is so uh, how to start the connection with uh, public sector is very difficult from bottom-up approach because, uh, for example, Ghana is a letter culture. And so if I, top-down culture, so if I, even we are uh, doing collaboration with grassroots activity from operational side, from the uh, operational side, we have to go up district level and regional level and national level and finally political level. So this, uh, line is very difficult. For example, one letter needs to go up to the whole month. Uh, so, but so how to solve this is firstly so or how to support the uh, uh, endorsement, getting endorsement. For example, WFP uh, endorsement uh, approval. I think this is one of the uh, knowledge from uh, there is a knowledge from such a uh, Japanese uh, government, and also. The top-down initiative, right? African Health Wellbeing Initiative is very, very uh, supportive because it's top-down from start from the Minister of Health. So only, only ten minutes. <laughs> so uh, by doing this, so we could start the collaboration with Sysmex uh, and the NEC. Uh, even NEC is a uh, uh, no, no, uh, no experience to start such a. Uh, project in Ghana. Uh, they have the knowledge in India, but so easy to enter. So I hope, so of course, bottom-up approach is very important, but also uh, such a uh, top-down initial approach that uh, through TICAT, like TICAT is very, very crucial. So it, for us, so finally for us, so I would like to go scale up and scale out to other countries. At that time, so I, I would appreciate such top-down initiative is uh, uh, very appreciated. So how, finally, so how to uh, uh, shorten the such mm, development time is very important. Bottom-up approach, we take around 10 years, but how to make within three years is, I think this is one trigger to enter the new company or new private sector join into the uh, African uh, market for, uh, for support for contributing UHC. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Takahashi. Uh, this is a, uh, your, re your reply, uh, you also reply a lot of uh, are learning from a uh, Japanese private sector in doing or uh, in expanding the business. Thank you very much. And, and this is the second question. And I expect three of uh, you 
uh, to respond to this. So uh, Celine in her presentation has mentioned that uh, there is still a gap uh, between the uh, political will or Japanese co the presence of JICA uh, Corporation and a uh, gap between the Japanese business interests in Africa. So is there any, uh, are there any strategies to solve, to narrow the gap? Um, so Celine, Mr. Kato, and uh, Mr. Takahashi, would you please share your views on that? Thank you. Yes, Sayoko. Yeah, this is a, this is a very um, tricky question and I'm not sure I'm the best place to, to reply to, to this question. So I, I rather uh, listen to my uh, Japanese colleagues, but um, I think that this question is not um, only relevant to, you know, Japanese cooperation to Africa. I think it's a uh, it's uh, relevant today because uh, there is much more um, state uh, government uh, implications in the in the international uh, economics and, and trade affairs. There is this, this notion of, of um, economic diplomacy, which is now very very strong, and uh, we know uh, that now uh, economic security also concept. Uh, is very popular because uh, we we thought that uh, uh, the economic interdependence would uh, ensure uh, peaceful relations, uh, peaceful international relations. But we've seen um, from some time now, but uh, more particularly uh, recently with uh, with uh, uh, behavior from from China and of course from from Russia that the uh, economic uh, relations can be weaponized uh, in order to put pressure uh, on countries or to constrain some countries or of course to influence. So uh, there is a, a strong uh, involvement of the government in, in the economic affairs. And of course, uh, this is uh, um, raising a very tough question about you know, the role of the private sector. The private sector has their own logic, uh, uh, their own, um, you know, thinking about, well, we, we need to make profit, we are, we are companies, uh, but uh, the government is thinking otherwise. It's thinking about strategic uh, positioning, it's, it's, it's thinking about uh, geopolitical issues and, and political, uh, political issues. And so how to make the, the two uh, work together, it's, it's not uh, so easy, uh, I guess. Uh, well, even if, if Japan has a very long history of uh, kind of administrative guidance of the, of the private sector, I think we are entering really in a new era uh, in which the, the government and the private sector has to redefine their, their role and, redefine the, 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 the way they, they cooperate, they collaborate together, and uh, they can find some uh, space for the, the private sector to, uh, to actually implement their own economic strategy and some space in which uh, the private sector will uh, support or uh, will um, actually follow uh, the government's line on uh, on some um, you know strategic relation with uh, some and some countries. So that would be my my <laughs> my reply. That it's not very uh, <laughs> satisfactory, but uh, that's my own thinking about what's going on. Thank you very much, Celine. Yeah, we understand that this is this is a very tough tough tough, tough question. Thank you. And so, how about you, Mr. Kato, on this topic? <laughs> Thank you, Kajon <laughs> San and Ruiz San. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very uh, difficult question. Um, firstly, I'd like to say that uh, for the Japanese companies, African market is a very difficult one. Mm. Uh, historically, uh, culturally, and uh, and uh, physically apart from Japan. And the uh, Japanese uh, uh, model of development is, for example, uh, Japan is very strong in uh, manufacturing. So that uh, 
uh, but uh, in in Africa, in some countries like uh, South Africa and uh, Morocco and uh, some others, uh, we have some Japanese companies have some, uh, I mean, uh, factories like uh, automobile, something like that. But uh, uh, it is not, uh, oh, mm, how can I say, uh, uh, for the all, all the uh, African countries. So uh, they are uh, uh, almost, uh, almost uh, there are some ex ex exception countries like I, I, I mentioned, but uh, uh, for for the other countries, it is not easy to uh, how can I say uh, uh, to to uh, to do manufacturing in Africa. So in that sense, uh, Japanese companies has have to uh, find a new business model, including I mean uh, support for the startups and also the uh, uh, green uh, business like. Um, uh, like uh, as I as I mentioned, ge geothermal uh, power plant, other uh, solar, something like that, and also uh, uh, agriculture. Agriculture is very potential, potentially uh, potential uh, industry. So, how to uh, do agriculture in Africa? Uh, there are a lot of possibilities, but. Uh, I think that the Japanese business uh, business are still uh, exploring the possibilities how to get into this uh, market. So, uh, as for uh, from JICA, we'd like to uh, support these uh, business uh, uh, trials, uh, starting from the uh, uh, enabling. I mean, uh, enabling investment environment. A uh, lot of Japanese, according to the Jetro's uh, 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 survey, uh, there are a lot of Japanese companies are still uh, find the difficulties in the uh, regulation, uh, implementation of regulation or the legislation, for example, so that uh, we'd like to ease these barriers for development uh, for business. This is the first thing. And also the, uh, uh, we have the business support scheme, as I mentioned, so that uh, we'd like to collaborate with using these schemes uh, to, uh, to get into the African market uh, for the uh, Japanese uh, companies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Kato. Um... So uh, then, Mr. Takahashi, would you, uh, would you have uh, some comments for that? Yes, uh, thank you. So, of course, talk is something operational, right? So, I think we would like to uh, create, we would like to maximize the social impact in country level through a sustainable way. This means private sector's involvement. So for making sustainability, private sector is very important. So in, especially in Africa, in, there is a market of social issues. So there, that means there are so many opportunities to private sector joining. So in the sense of beneficiary first, I think that I, I would like to involve big com countries, companies, companies to getting, but so of course, even big com companies, uh, it is difficult to get enter as, uh, as a result. So my solution is now I, I'm challenging, I'm just doing my solution, it, my, uh, it, it's, Let's go together. So I, for example, the work support together and create synergy. So Azimoto Foundation is already uh, collaborate with uh, Ghana Health Service. That's why so we have a lot of connection. So we uh, 
invite the con another companies, for example, Sysmex and NEC, and creating durable concept for, for contributing beneficiaries. And the, the mutual respectfulness is important, and the durable concept is important for which part it's uh, create, uh, it's in charge, and how to create synergy without conflict. This such durable concept is very important. But going together, let's uh, going together. Uh, the government, Japanese government, or for example, other government as well, is easy to easier to support because it's not only for focusing only one company, company, company. So this is a whole company is regarding relating to universal health coverage. It's easy to support in, in the sense of the uh, UHC and also the initiative, it's a, the target of the actual target of African Health Wellbeing Initiative like FICAT. So I think go together and uh, invite together and uh, support together and uh, support together and, create, and finally create synergy is important to make durable and finally create durable concept. This is our responsibility and the government can support. But the one, one issue is so uh, such uh, African health well-being initiative is a good concept that is, but is uh, not so enough grant uh, uh, there. So I uh, so made the another UN type, UN PPP grant. But if uh, we can create such fund uh, for African health well-being initiative fund, so I think it's, it is easier to uh, start uh, Start because so oh, such UN type grant need some um, also endorsement each uh, to to United Nations. But if we make only our uh, private sectors and this is good for or contribute to universal health coverage to the sustainable way, so government can support and uh, it's as a pilot and and scale up is our responsibility. So oh, mm, I don't know that this is a answer, but in operational side, so this is my opinion. Thank you. Now challenging, now I'm doing, we are doing. Yes. We are doing. Thank you very much, Mr. Takahashi. Um, let me ask you uh, some basic question. Um, I'm sorry because uh, the, does Ajinomoto Foundation work in other African countries uh, such as uh, Ivory Coast or in neighboring countries? Uh, not yet, not yet. So now, so oh, only we are focusing of in Ghana, but so in future, uh, I would like to expand this model to remain uh, to remaining African countries, in especially in low middle income countries, which uh, to scale to it, which is good for private sectors and in sustainable way. So. For example, Ivory Coast and uh, of course Kenya and Nigeria. Now I'm I'm um, considering considering other countries. Yes. So it is not only in West Africa, but also in uh, other area like uh, you said, yes. Okay, yes. And Kenya and other parts. Hmm. Yes. Oh, that's promising. <laughs> this is a very good news for African countries. I think. Thank you very much, Mr. Takahashi, and thank you also for uh, uh, other panelists, uh, Celine and uh, Mr. Mr. Kato, uh, for you, taking your time in responding uh, uh, to our first question. Now uh, we are approaching to the end of the uh, Q&A discussion, and I would like to ask uh, Professor Izumi Ono uh, to wrap up and uh, conclude this webinar. Thank you very much. And dear, uh, dear panelists, please turn on your uh, camera on. Yeah, could you please turn your yeah, my video on so that we can be everybody on the screen. Takahashi-san and also Kato-san. Okay. So 
Thank you very much for really excellent uh, presentation and also stimulating discussion. And it's from really broad perspective and also the, the JICA's policies, what is on the ground, and also Takaisa's concrete example, how Ajinomoto is working. So it is very difficult for me to, to wrap up, but let me just share with you my uh, the maybe comments in the three ways. First, um, I think currently, as everybody agrees, that it's a very difficult time and a lot of changes is taking place. But also we have to remember there were a lot of crises in the past. There used to be a Cold War and then Cold War is over, a new transition to the market economy. Now that a solid democracy is, is, is a basis for African development. And then debt crisis was there sometime. And then global financial crisis was there, and then now COVID and also green crisis. But I think there are many, many crises we have already done again. And each time we try to solve those problems. And then I think fundamentally the important issue, you know, whatever the crisis, we cannot I mean, avoid it because it is so interconnected. But I think it's important we have to think about how to strengthen our society and also economy and structural diversities and then universal health coverages, nutrition, those things are fundamental. So I think whatever that thinks, it may come, but we should be really working together for Africa on tackling the core problem because crisis may exacerbate it for particularly for those people who are really vulnerable. So, and so I think we have to worry about that the global situation. At the same time, we have to really work together with African people and society and the government, the private sector to strengthen the core part of maybe development. So that I think we, we have to keep working. So I hope maybe development cooperation and JICA is working, uh, will maybe continue to be very important, uh, particularly together with the private sector and also NGO. Second, uh, I think long-term partnership is so critical. Um, I think Kato-san said that there well, were several examples. I think JICA has been working for CART for agriculture uh, development on the uh, uh, on the, the new uh, the rice uh, the, the development, and then also the Noguchi Memorial Institute, which have a like, long term years and decades of partnership. Based on that, there are certain tangible results, and also trust has been built. And then the counterpart agency, the partners, they are now very much active. And then um, uh, Kato-san said that the Noguchi Memorial Institute is now playing a very critical role in uh, that, that, I mean, testing at the PCR, et cetera, in the country. So there are so many examples on that. And also uh, Takahashi-san said that I was so impressed. It is from 2009, Ajinomoto-san has been working on this project, starting from the, the concept. I think we are lucky to be able to listen to the initial stage of your also experiment at the time, same time. And every time we've been so impressed of how much progress you are making and also how many partnership you are building with the Ghana Health Services, Ghana communities, NGO, international organization, and also new maybe the partnership with Japanese company with using digital technology. Uh, it's me, uh, it must be a really, uh, I mean, lots of effort you've been making, yeah. Uh, but I think because of this, there is a trust. And also maybe Japan may not, may not be so strong, maybe not good at in showing up in a short term, but uh, I think private sector and also maybe JICA or government sector, I think we are really thinking to work together as much as possible long term and building partnership. So I think those would be a very important asset and value. So how, I think, I think how we can really, how to say, um, catalyze this long-term partnership and also asset. And then this can be done from the close communication between the Japanese government and Japanese private sector, uh, and also showing those that the private sector the effort to the African uh, partners, including African leaders, African business community, and also maybe social uh, that enterprises and young people. So um, I think how to maybe close the gap uh, in the political will and also the business interest. I think business interest is there and also very good will is there. So we should really uh, reinforce long-term partnership with various angles. So this is what I really hope uh, we, that we, sh we should be doing. And then lastly, uh, I'd like to mention that the maybe keyword I got from today, I think every, I think Kato-san said about the trust. 
and also uh, Takashi san said that in the trust. And then I think in the initial stage, you've been creating some concept and then creating tangible outcome. Then based on the tangible outcome of the evidence, people started to really trust you and then started to have a community to do something to together and then expanding those partnerships more and more. So I think those are, I think, very essential way to do it. And then uh, I think whatever maybe difficulties we may have, um, I think we would like to really keep those value together and then uh, building trust in a long-term partnership and then try to for, uh, reinforce maybe structural problem of that uh, maybe uh, African maybe development if they face. So these are things which we hope uh, we'd like to maybe uh, maybe continue to doing that. And then I really got a very good inspiration, particularly the actual really results are so many and how we can maybe scale up those things between partnership between government and business sector and also talking to African leaders, the African business people, African maybe young people. Those are things I think we, We'd like to really keep working together. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for your uh, collaboration. And also Pajon san talked about EU-Japan partnership. I think that is also very important angle because EPA has been concluded successfully. And then now I think that we've been discussing how we can concretely implement and then sustainable development, value chain, connectivity. Those are, I think, common. I think, uh, I think a value we have. So maybe we can also expand our partnership completely with the European partners even more. But anyway, so thank you so much. We have really learned a lot and we hope we can be uh, optimistic. And we should be working together. Thank you very much. So let us close today's um, session. And then thank you very much for all the panelists for spending important time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. All. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.